This short presentation uh, is designed to introduce one of the activities in the, the workshop. Uh, in this activity, what we want to do is we want to have a look at what are the competencies that uh, you have chosen, the ICT in education competencies, how do they align to the UNESCO framework, and are there any open educational resources, OER, that could be used to help accelerate the development process? In this table, we are trying to identify where existing resources might help the courseware developers develop lessons and units based around the competencies that you've identified. If you look in the column number one, those are the competencies which have uh, arose out of debates and discussions in the previous workshops. Uh, and if you now have a look in the right hand column, those are potential OERs, open educational resources, uh, and some of them are open courseware, which might be useful in creating lessons to achieve the competencies that you've identified. Um, this the, the fit between the existing OERs and the competencies that you've identified isn't perfect. The, the sites that we've drawn on referred specifically to competencies identified in the UNESCO framework, um, whereas yours are unique. So it's a bit of a, um, a suggestion really about which ones might be uh, of potential use. We're going to spend a little bit of time having a look at some of the uh, the bigger ones. Uh, you'll see they are referred to a few times in the table, uh, and we'll discuss their strengths and potential um, drawbacks. The first example of an existing course which could be used and adapted because of its open license is the Kenyan ICT CFT course. Uh, this was a project very similar to the one that you're doing with UNESCO. Uh, in this case, it was the Ministry of Education Kenya, who were the partners. But they drew on a large uh, representation from various other groups, including different uh, government units, um, some of the universities, the Teacher Service Commission, uh, and so on. Um, you'll see that they've stuck quite closely to the UNESCO framework. They use exactly the same... Um, domains. They call them themes, but you'll see all six of them are represented there. Uh, however, the meat of the course are the 14 units. So if we have a look at unit one, you'll see which particular competencies they have identified. This is unit one, and you'll see that on the right hand side of the header is the UNESCO ICT CFT that they uh, are trying to respond to. You can see one of them is drawn from technology literacy and the second one is knowledge deepening. However, they weren't very happy with the way they were phrased and uh, therefore they imposed their own understanding of what those competencies actually were. And you can see they've rewritten them also in the heading and these are the ones to which they actually built the course. Unit one is a good mix of reference material uh, and the ability for the group to discuss and reflect on those readings and uh, they've used both chats and forums in order to engage the uh, the teachers. Um, if we scroll down you can see that they try and unpack it uh, very carefully. What is the national ICT policy? What is the uh, ICT and education policy? And so on. Um, uh, but for us as a developers, we are interested in this last little section. Here is where they um, show us where they have used OER um, ahead of them. Um, you can see they've used the Guiana materials. They've used something from a local university, the Inureru University. Uh, and of course, you can see they acknowledge the uh, the policy documents themselves. And if we look further down, we can see under credits who was the little team who did the adaptation and revision. Uh, what is the open license? And in this case, it's 
uh, Creative Commons attribution share alike. Uh, and uh, are there any limitations to that particular license? And in this case, they acknowledge that the government materials aren't open, um, although obviously the government wants to distribute them as far as possible. So the nice thing about the license then is that you could um, take components of this course uh, and adapt it. For example, the Kenyan policies make uh, absolutely no sense in your context. So those could be replaced with um, Philippine uh, examples um, and uh, the idea as long as you acknowledge that you have used their resource at some point they're very happy for you to do so. Our next example is OER for schools. Um, this is a resource that has been developed uh, with the University of Cambridge and uh, their teacher partners in Zambia and now Rwanda and Kenya. Um, where this particular resource is useful in terms of the UNESCO ICT CFT is in the two domains, one curriculum and the second one pedagogy, um, as it focuses specifically in those areas. It is not perfectly aligned to the UNESCO ICT CFT. Um, however, the, um, the activities and the study focus is um, uh, very much in line with those two domains. If we have a look on the left hand side you can see the types of things that they cover. For example, um, uh, what is interactive teaching? How does ICT actually support teaching and how might it change the way that we teach? Trying to break away from didactic types um, approaches to teaching. You can see that they also look at questioning as a technique. Um, the third thing is they look at uh, group work. How should that be organized properly? Uh, and also they spend some time on assessment uh, and inquiry-based learning. If we scroll to the bottom, we can see that the OER for Schools content also has a Creative Commons license. Uh, in this case, it has two. Uh, certain units have the um, Attribution Share Alike license, which is um, nice and broad, but uh, some of them, because they've used materials which um, already have non-commercial share alike as a component, they've had to go for Attribution Non-Commercial. So just keep an eye on that, but otherwise these materials too are available for um, reuse or repurposing. Another very useful OER or open courseware is the CCTI, uh, the Commonwealth Certificate for Teacher ICT Integration, which has been uh, developed by Schoolnet South Africa and the Commonwealth of Learning. Um, it is very broad and it covers many, many different um, components of how ICT could be used within teaching and learning, but also other areas of a teacher's professional life. If you look in the bottom right hand corner, um, the Creative Commons license is nice and broad, allowing you to repurpose uh, as much as you would like. This open courseware, ICT and Education for Teachers, uh, course was developed by the Ministry of Education in Guyana with support from the Commonwealth of Learning, the Commonwealth Secretariat and Microsoft. Um, it, there were a number of different versions. This one we're looking at is for in-service, but there was also a pre-service one, which uh, our understanding is it is in still operation. Uh, it works at the teacher training colleges and in the faculty of education at the local university. If you look at the way they've organized it, um, on the top right hand corner, they've divided the competencies into technology literacy, knowledge deepening, knowledge creation. We are now looking at one of the lessons, or they call them units, uh, under the technology literacy section. This one is module three, unit one. Uh, we can see that there are actually four units of work in this particular um, section on pedagogy. We can see that they have identified the specific UNESCO ICT CFT competency. In this case, it's technology literacy 3A, and those codes uh, refer to the Appendix A of the UNESCO document. Uh, we can see also that 
they have divided it into what they call lecture notes, which is basically the content. Then a tutorial session, because in their minds there would be a face-to-face -face, uh, interaction with a, a tutor. Uh, there's a practical session, whereby there would be some work on the computer. And there is also a self-study section, where the students can, well in this case the teachers, can go off and um, work on their own. Originally the um, course was developed as a paper-based course, as strange as that may sound, connectivity and access to digital devices were so poor uh, uh, back in 2011, 2010, um, that they thought initially it would be best if there was a print version. So there is, but it didn't take them long to realize that perhaps um, digital content uh, in a web-based format uh, would also be easy to distribute either using a USB stick or in those days a CD-ROM. The Guyana materials have a very open license. Um, in this case it's the Creative Commons Attribution License. Um, if you click on the Resources tab in the left hand uh, column, then you can see the individual OERs that were used. Um, in some cases they've used free materials such as the GCF Learn Free um, tutorials, uh, but a, a copious use of other ones. So the individual licenses are all actually um, identified in the resource section. Um, one of the drawbacks of the Guyana materials is that it is very text heavy. So I would suggest one of the things you would need to repurpose is how can you use less text and perhaps other multimedia, perhaps video or audio, to actually get the message across. Another recent OER that could be used is ICT Essentials for Learners. Um, this was a UNESCO project with the Rwanda Education um, Board and the idea here was to focus more on technology literacy. So whereas many of the others tend to focus on knowledge deepening, this one's pretty good if you want to have some ideas about how to approach those um, earlier um, competencies. The uh, license, the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license, allows you to um, repurpose as you like. The 14 units range from very simple ideas, uh, for example, how do you troubleshoot uh, ICT problems, especially for new teachers this is often a problem. Um, and yet it uh, stretches right up through things such as how do you organize your physical environment, how do you use ICT to support pedagogy and assessment, how much you use ICT resources to extend your professional development. So a nice range of different skill sets. This table on page two of their document uh, demonstrates how each of the different units are aligned to the UNESCO ICT CFT framework. The Rwandan materials though aren't organized as a course. Um, they are actually written as facilitation notes. So the audience in this case is rather the person or people who will need to drive the process. The thinking was that uh, this particular course would be run as a blended learning course. So there would be some face-to-face -face, and then there would be some online materials. So here in Unit 1, for example, the top section tells us basically what are the competencies, the learning objectives, content and learning activities, what are the materials that will be needed in order for this lesson uh, to work and in this case this lesson is on policy so there's the particular Rwandan policies that will be um, required. Are there any open education resources which could be used to uh, supplement the course? And then how would you actually teach this section, the facilitation component? So here you'll see there's activity one, activity two, and it describes to the uh, facilitator 
what they should be doing. Right, so there you have it. Um, those are the OERs we think uh, might be useful uh, in order for you to develop materials for these competencies that you have identified. We've, we hope uh, the little introductions has, has helped so that you understand where these resources come from, what they were trying to achieve. And in all the cases, the licenses are nice and open, uh, allowing you big latitude in what you might do with them to improve, enhance or adapt them. Thank you very much. And now it's over to you.